Welcome to the Broken News PBS K36 BW with your co anchors Justin Harris and Cody Best. And weather with Conrad Jenkins. This is your broken news. That's good, I like that. So yeah, I'm getting kind of burned out on this Anchorman thing. Yeah, me too. I wish somebody uh, from getting... the public would come in and take my place. Yeah, it's getting kind of old. Come huh? do the broken news. Come try being an Anchorman or woman. <laughs> It's not as hard as you think. <laughs> it's not. Check this out. Hello everyone and welcome to The Broken News. I'm Justin Harris. And I'm Cody Best. And it's a beautiful day in Sanders County. Yes, yes it is. In this show we are going to be covering many events and topics including free food. Did you say free food? I didn't stutter. I said free food from Thompson Falls very own Little Bear Ice Cream. So no free food, just ice cream. Well, they serve food there, too. Actually, it's excellent food. And how can you say just free ice cream? Ice cream is a staple in comfort foods. If you're in the grips of a bad day, an ice cream might be just a thing to bring you back from the brink of insanity. Well, I didn't mean it like that. Uh, in fact, I ice cream for ice cream. But back to the case at hand. I'm curious. How do I get some free food? Well, I'm sorry to break this to you, but you don't. But you do. Just keep track of how many times we say the words Sanders County in our show and we'll give you a $10 gift certificate. If you have the correct number, email it to pbsbrokennews at yahoo.com with your name and phone number so we can get you your gift certificate. Wow, such a deal. You get some free food. And uh, with the economy and the shape that it's in, it's not a moment too soon, but I'm wondering. Did that count? Did what count? Well, you just said Sanders County. So did I. Do those three count? Yes, they do. Okay, so with the introduction and the two times we just said it, we're at three Sanders counties. Uh, four actually. You just said it again. So I did. And if you're keeping track out there, let us know at pbsbrokennews at yahoo.com. They are gooey, sweet and spicy, often served with a pat of butter, warmed enough for the icing to melt and the butter to drip down the sides. Served with a cup of piping hot coffee, a cinnamon roll is the epitome of the perfect breakfast. Do you know who makes the best cinnamon roll in Sanders County? We, we do. do. In celebration of this down-home baked good, the first cinnamon roll challenge was a special event of the Thompson Falls Market, hosted on Saturday, September 26th from 9 a.m. to 1 p.m. 
on the west lot of the Falls Motel. It marks the end of the market season, and what a way to end it. Good job, Falls Motel. Thank you for hosting such a wonderful event. I can't wait till next year. Seeds and starts, baby. That's how it starts. <laughs> and now a huge thank you and a warm welcome. Oh, well. Jenny Dyer is stepping down from 30 years of service with the Girl Scouts of America. Her dedication to the betterment of our community's young ladies and organization of an array of activities and fundraisers to enrich the lives of the girls and families they work with are invaluable efforts for our area. 30 years. That's a good long run. And quite successful. I can't imagine the feeling of fulfillment that could come from 30 years of anything. Aren't you going to be 30 in February? Yeah, but in Peter Pan years, that's not much. Speaking of young blood, Tamara Skibstead will be filling the shoes as service unit manager for our local Girl Scouts. And as the father of three girls, I for one am excited. New personnel bring new facets to systems that were put in place by predecessors. Change is good, and change makes the sky bluer. Do you think it can make Girl Scout cookies even better? Can they get any better? Only with sponsorship. And if you'd like to sponsor this fantastic organization, contact Tamara Skibstead at 827-5683. Best wishes to the Girl Scouts and Tamara Skibstead in their new year. Moving on, in an effort to cleanse our mountain lakes of the scourge that is the brook trout, the Montana Fish, Parks, and Wildlife have carried out with a program that some critics say is tantamount to brook trout genocide. What critics said that? Um. Just my segue. Sounded good. Oh, okay. Anyways, in Blossom Lake near Thompson Pass on the border of Montana and Idaho, efforts have been made to eradicate the weaker, inferior, non-native brook trout. Its goal is to eliminate these radical fish that moved into this border area in the last century and inevitably wreaked havoc on the existing native populations of cutthroat and bull trout. Ah, uh, the border regions a setting that hosts many a classic story of struggle to survive. Some reasons for going forward with this removal were that the immigrant fish are generally less productive. That's right, ladies and gentlemen, lazy immigrant fish. Our lakes were already stressed to the point of near larvation. Complicate this with an economic downturn and top it all off with immigrants competing for their very livelihood, it's amazing it's taken this long to come to the decision to rid ourselves of this hobo fish by piscicide application, rotenone to be precise. It's a chemical that won't stay in the lake long and has low toxicity to mammals like me. And you. Seriously, Cody, is that the only reason that they have to kill all these fish? Because they're not from here? And if they're not productive, why does it matter if they're there at all? They were part of the Rebel Alliance and traitors to the Empire who had to be dealt with. What? I, I mean, uh, okay, if that doesn't cut it for you, how about this? These fish, the brook trout, a name that masks the very ugly nature of these dangerous fiends, were interbreeding with our native populations of cutthroat and, yes, even our precious bull trout populations. They have muddied up the DNA of our ethnically pure and superior dominant species with lazy gutterfish DNA, turning what were once shining examples for the whole world of trout superiority into a generation of lost purebreeds, hoping to hold out against the onslaught of generations of immigrant fish to come. Well, <laughs> I guess with the threat of hybridization, this doesn't sound like it's all that bad of an idea. So, how was this thing carried out? I and mean, tell me the details, and please don't spare us the nitty gritty. Right. Oh, I won't spare you the gory details. First, the Montana Fish, Wildlife, and Parks had to remove the precious members of the pure native breeds from the stream connecting Blossom Lake to Prospect Creek by way of backpack shockers that deliver an electric charge that stun fish, causing them to rise to the surface. They collected nearly 500 cutthroat trout from the stream. Along with the brown trout, the cutthroat trout is a native species and is protected in western Montana, and therefore will be held until the lake is clear of the brook trout blight. 